Welcome to Electron Line, and here we're going to continue with explaining what the various forms are for Maxwell's equations in the differential form and how they relate to the equations in integral form. Now, the ones in the differential form, they're a little bit more difficult to comprehend as far as trying to make a relationship between the mathematical equations and what's really going on in the real world when we talk about charges, electric field, charge distributions, and so forth. So let's go ahead and try to show you how we can take the differential form of Gauss's law like this and show that it's equal to the integral form of Gauss's law. And again, just as a quick reminder, how do we read the integral form of Gauss's law? Well, we can say that if we have a certain amount of charge distribution, let's say in a spherical volume right here with, with radius r, and we want to know what the electric field strength is at some point, let's say right here on the edge of that spherical volume, if we want to know what that is, Gauss's law stated that if we take the strength of the electric field at the surface, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take an imaginary surface and engulf the, the charge with an imaginary surface called the Gaussian surface. And if we multiply the electric field times the, what we would call the area of the, of the Gaussian surface, knowing real well that the magnitude of the electric field will be the same in any direction, of course the direction will be different, but the magnitude will be the same in any direction. If we then integrate, in other words, multiply the electric field strength times the surface area that will always be equal to the charge inside that surface divided by epsilon sub naught. So how does that then state, how is that same thing stated in this equation right here? Well this is what we call the del operator and when we multiply that, this is a dot product with the strength of the electric field, well not just the strength but the electric field right there, if we do this del operation or we call it a divergence, that is equal to the charge density of the charge inside the surface divided by epsilon sub naught. So how can those two things be the same and what does this really mean in the first place? Because that's kind of a confusing statement and we'll take a few videos to slowly break down the meaning of this equation right here but the first thing we want to do is show you that these are actually equivalent to each other and we're going to do that by using what we call the divergence theorem the divergence theorem states that if we take the the surface integral of e dot da that that is exactly equal to according to the divergence theorem the volume integral, so this is the surface integral where we're integrating a small little surface element right there so we can take a small little dA and there's a normal vector n and so this here, this, this area, this small little dA multiplied times a normal vector that is equal to dA like that so that's the same thing, so if we then go ahead and integrate that over the entire surface like that the, the divergence theorem says that's equal to the integral, the volume integral of the divergence of the electric field times dV. So this is what the divergence theorem states and we're not going to prove the divergence theorem here but we just know that these are equal to each other. Now the next step we can do is we can relate this to this. How do we figure out the Q inside if we know the density and let's say that the density is equal throughout the entire sphere there, the entire uh, spherical shell. Okay, we can then also say that if we integrate the density, the charge density throughout this Gaussian surface times dV by definition that will be equal to the Q inside. So what that means is if we take a small little volume in here like so and we calculate how much charge is in there and we then find the density of that, if we multiply the density times dV and we integrate that over the whole volume we will indeed get the total charge inside. All right, so that means that I can take this equation right here, we'll replace this portion, the left portion, by this, and then I can replace this by this, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to take this equation right here, which is the integral form of, the, of Gauss's law, and replace the left side by the divergence theorem. So we take the volume integral of the divergence of the electric field, and of course at this point we may not know yet what that means, and Okay, be patient because that takes a little while to explain so we'll have several more videos explaining what this exactly means times dV but at least we can do this mathematically and that is equal to the Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught so we'll write 1 over epsilon sub naught and instead of writing the Q inside we'll replace it by this volume integral so times the integral, the volume integral of the density, the charge density inside the volume times dV 
Okay, now this is a constant, so we, this is not affected by the integral. What we can now do is take the derivative of both sides, a triple derivative. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the integral by taking the triple derivative of both sides of the equation, which would get rid of the dv, and we get rid of the integral sign. And then if we do that, we're left with the divergence of the electric field is equal to the charge density divided by epsilon sub naught, which now we know as the differential form of the Gauss's law. So now you can see that by using some theories, we can see that this equation is identical to this equation. So at least now we know, okay, we're good. This is just a different form of the very same equation. Now, in the next videos, we're going to take this and show you what this really means physically, because what's really confusing about it, well, first of all, we need to learn what the del operator is, what we do when we do a dot product with the electric field, and we also have to understand what the charge density is in there, because that depends upon what we're really dealing with. For example, if we have something like this, it's easy to talk about the charge density by taking the Gaussian surface and completely engulfing the charge. But what if we have a single point charge like that, and we draw a surface like that, what does the charge density really mean? And also, what does the differential operator or the del operator multiplied times electric field really mean in the physical world? Well, if you're interested, stay tuned. I'll show you in the next several videos.